I've just clocked in to the third of this year's Christmas lectures on time. Now, time is something that we never seem to have enough of. And part of the reason is because of these things. Computers, microprocessors and everything, mobile phones, all these types of gadgets, fast communication. But how fast can all this stuff get? Well, it turns out, to answer that question, we have to look into the bizarre, slightly strange world of quantum physics. Because it's because of the understanding of quantum physics that we've actually been able to develop all this stuff. Also turns out that it's through quantum physics that we've been able to develop the most accurate clocks that are currently available. Atomic clocks, giving us atomic time. And it's probably because of our understanding of quantum physics that we may eventually be able to pin down what time itself actually means. So how fast is this quantum world? A volunteer, please. Would you like to come down? Your name is? Sorry? Lara. Lara. Stand here. Laura. Stand there, please, Laura. Laura, I have here a gearbox. And Laura, I'd like you to turn this gearbox roughly once a second. Just turn the handle of the gearbox. Now, there's a pointer on the back of this gearbox. And as Laura turns it roughly once a second, this pointer goes round once a minute. OK, thanks very much, Laura. I'm going to stay there. I'm just going to connect a second gearbox, exactly the same as this first one, on the back. Now what's going to happen, Laura, would you keep turning? This way. Now that Laura's turning it, this pointer's turning around once a minute, and this second pointer is actually going to be turning around once an hour. We're multiplying up time. Now what would happen if we connected, we carried on connecting gearboxes? Well, that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to bring on another eight gearboxes, connect them to these two, and see what happens. Laura, would you come and stand here? I'm going to connect up the boxes. Now, Laura, carry on turning. You're doing a great job. So as Laura turns this once a second, this first pointer turns round once a minute, and the second pointer turns round once an hour. Now, I have a question for all of you. Because all these gearboxes are connected, they're all multiplying up time in exactly the same way, how long has poor Laura got to turn the handle at that end such that the pointer at this end goes round once? So, have some suggestions, please. 24 hours. 24 hours? Okay. Any advances? 24 hours? Any more? 32 hours. 32 hours? A month? Six hours? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Who said a year? You're the closest. But you're actually still a long way off. Because the, wait a minute, wait, wait. The answer, I don't think you're going to get it. Because the answer turns out to be 19 billion years. And that is longer than the age of the universe. You could say that it's longer than the age of time itself. So I don't think we'll make poor Laura <laughs> try and turn it round. Thank you very much, Laura. <laughs> now, if you don't believe me, no reason you should, we have here the times. Laura was starting off with one second, goes through a minute, an hour, and then it starts to scale up 150 days, 25 years, and eventually you reach 19 billion years. OK, now we're going to run this in reverse. What I want you to imagine 
is that this pointer at the end down here is now actually turning once every second. So we're going to make it turn once a second. So how quickly is this handle that Laura was turning here? How long is it going to take for this handle to actually go around? Well, actually, the time is one six hundred million billionth of a second. And this is the quantum world. These are the types of times and the time scales that we talk about in the quantum world. It's pretty short, right? In fact, this is far shorter than anything we could possibly imagine. So how is it, first of all, that scientists this, uh, the early on in this century actually hit upon the quantum world? Why do we need the quantum world at all? And that's what we're going to start to investigate. In fact, the story of quantum physics started with an oven. A pizza oven. Any oven. Just any hot object emitting energy. This is for those kind of individual pizzas here. Got to put on the protective goggles and the gloves. Because when I open this oven up, you're going to see the oven itself is glowing red hot. The light and the heat that's being emitted is actually just waves. They're all part of the electromagnetic spectrum. That's really hot. We know that, and we can feel the heat. Some of you in the front might actually be able to have felt that heat coming off. But that's precisely what troubled scientists. If they added up the amount of energy coming off in the electromagnetic waves, and that could be heat or light, or all, the whole range, the amount that they calculated was far greater than the amount that was actually coming out of the oven. In other words, the amount of energy calculated using the wave theory of light that was around at the beginning of the century and it worked perfectly well for everything else didn't seem to fit the experiment. Now, to show you what's going on here, and to actually show you the experiment that led to the understanding of the energy carried by light, we need to do an experiment involving electric charges. You've seen the machine, now I need the volunteer. Would you like to come up, please? And your name is? Philip. Philip. Now, Philip, this experiment involves you being a king for a day. If you'd like to put on a crown, if you'd like to stand on that stool. Now what this does, this generates electric charges, and these electric charges are what we need to carry out our experiment on the energy of light waves. So first of all, to show you how it works, I pass this belt around, it generates charges, it passes the charges to the top of this generator. So Philip, would you like to put your hand on top of the generator? Okay? Right. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to generate charges on the top of the Van de Graaff generator, and these charges, because they're all the same charge, are going to try and get away from each other. So they're going to pass on to Philip, and they're going to go to his head. In fact, they're going to pass on to his crown, and the paper on the crown is actually going to rise up. That's great. Well, I think it looks rather good. So what's happened is the charges, because they're trying to get away from each other, they've actually passed on to these pieces of paper, and the paper's flown up in the air to try and, get, try and separate the charges. OK. Since Philip's still isolated, the charges stay there. If I ask Philip to step down, then it will all discharge. OK, that's great. Thanks very much, Philip. You'd like to go and sit down.